So this is, of course, episode number eight. We're drawing the ingredients, and um, I'm curious. Okay, our fruit we are going to use is, we are going to use a papaya. Oh, you can't see it now. Um, okay, interesting. Wow. All right, let's go ahead and find now the next one, the next ingredient. We have papaya, and second ingredient will be papaya and clove. Oh. Uh. Um. <laughs> Alright, so I've collected all my ingredients. Here's my recipe. It's been a few weeks, by the way, since I spun this, so it's been some time. Um, we're using about two and a half pounds of avocado blossom honey, water up to, well, actually a whole gallon of water, um, and that's of course spring water. We're gonna be using this, this is some papaya puree that I had to specialty buy. I could go in the backstory of trying to find uh, papaya flavoring, but this was tough. So this was all I could find, or the best choice. We are also using the Kvike um, Voss. It's an ale yeast. I think this will be really good for this, actually. Um, and then, of course, we're going to have to use our clove. So the first step we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and mix in all of our ingredients so that we can go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna mix in my water, which is right here, a gallon of, of water and my honey, and then I'll talk about the puree. All right, so I've mixed in my honey and water. My yeast is right here. Um, anyways, papaya. I normally like to put my fruit in the secondary, but I have a unique opportunity here to split this. I'm gonna go ahead and put half of this, which is actually, uh, two pounds because there's weight of the container. Um, I'm gonna put two pounds in the primary and then in the secondary, I will put two pounds. So we're gonna get flavorings in both ends and that's simply because you can get different, you can achieve different things at each different state. Um, so let me go ahead and mix in two pounds of this papaya puree. Ooh, that papaya puree tastes interesting. Um, uh, you know, we'll see what it does. I think putting it in the primary will add some things and secondary will add others. This bucket still has about two inches on top, so I'm not too worried about headspace. We're gonna add the last two things. We're gonna add my Kvai Kvass. Here we go. I'm actually only gonna use, I'm gonna estimate that to be, uh, this is a 10 gram packet, so this is 11 grams, excuse me. So that's three grams, so that's more than we need. And the last thing we're gonna add, is some dimonium phosphate. All right, mixed everything in. Starting gravity is about 1.065. Um, I don't know how much gravity this will actually attribute. It does have sugars in it, but it's, uh, I'm not exactly sure how much sugar. Anyways, we're gonna assume, let's pretend this thing is up at 1.070, assuming that there are some sugars within that papaya juice that doesn't add to here for some reason. So I'm gonna go ahead and round up. Someone's gonna get mad, sorry. Starting gravity, 1.070. So we're looking somewhere in the realm of 9.1-ish percent, 9.2 percent ABV, which is great. And that Kvai Kvass will chew through that completely. We are now going to throw a lid, an airlock on this. We're gonna let it go through the primary and come back after it finishes. All right, so this thing fermented in about nine days. It blew through all of the gravity. It's currently at 1.0000, which means, of course, with us starting at, I have to double check, a 1.070, uh, that's like a 9.2% meat or somewhere in that regard. Uh, anyways, the um, next step for us is going to be to take and actually rack this into a new container. I know it's only nine days old, so that kind of means that it's pretty young, it's gonna have lots of issues, but that's okay. So let me rack it over first. It has cleared up some too, by the way. So look at that orange color. I don't know if you can see it, super orange. If you ever wanna get a orange color in a mead, it seems like papaya has your way. Okay, I'm gonna rack this over with my sanitized things, of course. Here we go. All right, we moved it out of that container. This is the current bucket. Of course, I don't wanna spill it. There is a lot of papaya puree. And that is stuff we don't really want to get in the mead. We already got some. It's not very clear. You can tell it's 
definitely not going to be clear for a little bit. We'll see how clear it is in general. I don't know how high papaya is in pectin. So uh, we'll see if that causes problems. Let's get a taste test of it. Oh, it's got a very full body. I really like the, um, the juiciness side that you get. It's definitely not your like atypical uh, mouthfeel that you get with something. I think the puree added a lot to that. There's not a huge yeasty flavor currently. There's also not like a punch yourself in the face uh, papaya flavor, but it's definitely like there. It's got the um, tropical fruity side, all of those things. I do think that adding some uh, honey back to this will help bolster honey character and will also bring sweetness, which will balance out the papaya flavor that we've kind of lost, being the sugars, I, sh I should say. My next step with this thing is going to be to take and leave it for a while. It's nine days old, we need it to clear up some. Before I just chunk stuff in and, and try to rush this thing, I wanna let it age a little bit. So I'm gonna write down my uh, current stuff about it and then we're going to come back in probably two or three weeks and stabilize it using potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite and then also uh, add some honey. So let's come back when we're ready to do that. Okay, to be very clear, the last time I touched this mead was a month and a half ago, almost two months ago. This is the only portion of it that is gonna be possible to clear. This right here is not gonna be clear. This puree has proved a lot of problems, to have a lot of problems. Definitely needs back sweetening. Papaya is strong, that flavor is strong, but it needs back sweetening. Yeah, let's add, um, I think we need to add our clove. Okay, so what I have here is a, a clove that I basically sma smashed up a little bit. A whole clove that smashed up. So we're adding that to this. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and stabilize this with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite because I wanna back sweeten safely. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real fast. Okay, now that I've added these things, I'm gonna wait and let the clove get to the point where I feel like it's strong enough. Um, I'm not gonna be able to pull off the clove necessarily because I did crush it up, but I'll let it get to that, the strength that I want it and then come back and back sweeten. We can safely back sweeten now because we have stabilized. So I'll be back probably in a week or so. That's my guesstimating. This is unfortunate that we lost so much to sediment, but that's the problem with using puree. Um, it just has a lot of solids in it. So we got about a half gallon here. I probably should have started with more, but that's okay. All right, so it's been about four days since I did anything with it, and I just mixed in what I thought was, would be an interesting combination of cranberry honey, which has its own richness to it, has its own bright fruity notes that I think could contrast well with our puree. Ooh, that's already mellowing out, which of course, oxygen. I'm down with that. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. It's been stabilized, so we're good to go ahead and back sweeten safely. I, because I don't want this to sit forever with oxygen on top, I am gonna go ahead and add, let's say we add a, about a quarter pound of cranberry honey. Now I wanna be careful. I'm gonna go ahead and put some of my mead into this jar so I don't oxygenate this one too much. Okay, so I lied. I ended up adding a third of a pound. Oh man, that clove is popping through. I think I'm actually grinding it up. Some helped. Papaya puree, whew, this one's buttery. I'm just sad, truly sad, that I only have a half gallon. Um, let's take a gravity reading to see where our final gravity is, and then we'll let it set, make sure it doesn't referm referment, and then come back and bottle. All right, so this is a little hotter than I thought. This is at 1020 for its final gravity. Of course, assuming that the uh, sorbate and potassium metabisulfide have worked, this will not referment. So I'm gonna wait 24 hours, 48 hours. We're gonna come back and bottle it, and then I'll bring a friend over to help me decide the fate or the truth if this can be a mead. BC, here we are. Yeah, we wow. We're it's here. Been so long. <laughs> we haven't recorded anything today. You've um, changed so much. <laughs> So we're here for episode number eight. Episode which number eight. Is, I mean, I feel like my first episode was about a year ago. So this has been, a, it's taken a long time. This is a long term project you've. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've got nine cooking back behind me. I got to get 10 going here soon. So, Dang. Um, I just told you a little bit about this papaya mm -hmm. and clove. 
Now, um, I did tell you a little bit about the method, papaya puree, honey, papaya, uh, the papaya in the primary. That's mm -hmm. what I'm say. And then I actually ground up clove this time. Okay. And put it in rather than just How do much? a whole clove. I did a whole clove. Okay. And for the one Ooh. gallon. All right. I was, you know, actually I did a, a, a whole clove for the half gallon. <laughs> So, Dang. good luck. <laughs> a lot of folks say when adding clove, you should just really kind of wave it around the carboy, and that's enough. Well, let's we'll find out today. <laughs> so, Great. Um, you guys have seen the process. Let's taste it. You know, I love clove. I hope so. <laughs> oh, God. Because <laughs> this put a lot in there. This does not taste that young at all. No, it's got age. This is smooth. Mm -hmm. It's buttery. It's, I, it I is mega buttery. Impressed. It's velvety and soft, and I could. I'm, it just hangs around <laughs> the clove. I could, I could take more clove. Yeah, <laughs> for real. I could. Yeah. This could be clovier. The fruitiness is really there. Mm -hmm. You get the that like little pop of tropical, but it's so like thick and luscious and viscous. I'm and very round. bummed that I only have a half gallon of this because this thing is. No, this is really good. After I, after I, like, it sat for a month and a half, and I was just letting it sit there, and it turned to, like, this, where the sediment had dropped. I racked it over, and then I tasted it and back sweetened it all thing, and I was like, man, I wish I had more. This, I think it's fantastic. No, I will say the nose on it is kind of weird. I was joking with him before we started rolling that it kind of smelled like ketchup. Mm. Always an encouraging thing to tell your friends. <laughs> Hi, your mead smells like ketchup. How does that make you feel? I, that may be a, a like a little bit of an exaggeration, but it's got that sweet, yeah, vegetal kind of not vinegary, but like pungent, mm -hmm. like like sticky kind of nose on it. This, none of that comes through in the in the in the flavor. Yeah, I was gonna say even coming off of when I racked it off, it's been only three or four days, but that's a lot of headspace. Yeah, and coming off a of racking, oxygen is n natural. So, wanted to really get this one out because, or really have a tasting yeah. of it soon because. What yeast is used? Voss. Voss. Kvike Voss. Because there's there is a real butteriness. There. Uh huh. In like whenever you get a real diacetyl lactic acid heavy Chardonnay, mm -hmm. where it's just like it, you almost feel like you put a pat of butter on your tongue. Yeah. This has got that, and I don't think Voss typically throws a lot of diacetyl. Part of that could be, of course, using um, the honey for back sweetening. That adds a little bit, but mm -hmm. that's a different kind of tannic value. I do wonder how much the, well, I know for a fact the papaya puree added a little bit of that texture to mm -hmm. it. Slightly. I mean, it is smooth. For context, I was going to use all four pounds of puree in this. And I learned after the primary, uh -huh. don't use that because <laughs> I lost you get a so much meat. Meat. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. So, this is good. I think this can be a combination. It's like just right at room temperature too. Uh -huh. I wouldn't want this chilled. Mm -hmm. It's nice and open and f like, I mean, it's really full bodied. Yeah. Like there's a lot happening on the palate. And Absolutely. This could be meat. I want more clove though. <laughs> Like I, I we did, can do that. We can <laughs> just, uh, just throw a pinch in there. But, um, yeah, I think the clove could be heavier. I think the papaya flavor is nice, and I think the honey compliment is great. Mm -hmm. I don't see why this couldn't be a mead. Well, you heard it here first. <laughs> um, I, I've enjoyed getting to do this one. Like I said, nine is back behind me right now, so expect that there are, if you're really looking for content... Um, there are seven other episodes in existence. And they're so fun. They are, I've had some wild ingredients. <laughs> um, and I, for the most part, I've had things that have, have worked pretty well. So uh, I'm continuing to do this series, and I hope that you will join me. Thank you, BC, for helping... Um, <laughs> Thank you. This is, like, really good. <laughs> <laughs> affirm um, an idea. If you would like to make this, my recipe is right here. Um, of course, uh, change it how you want, or do whatever you want with it, but... Attempt a papaya and clove mead if you can do it. Uh, make any mead that you possibly can. Go check out his channel down in the description if you want a quick link or just look at doing the most everywhere that the internet exists and uh, you'll find him. And your grocery freezer are Yes, there you go. <laughs> so, thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.